Ah, uh, Super Mario World. I can easily say this is my favorite 2D Mario game of all time, with Luigi U coming second. Do I really need to say anything? I'm sure you all know what this game is all about. What else could possibly make this game more interesting? How about some version differences? Joining me today to share some juicy differences is Fernando from FSORC. We just completed a versus on this particular game, so I figured I'd bring him along for the ride. Hey guys, it's Fernando from FSOC. Super Mario World was my very first video game, so I'm glad to be here saying and learning so many things about it. Today we'll be looking at the American, PAL, and Japanese version of the original game, as well as this thing called the Nintendo Super System. I've never heard of it before. Have you heard of it, Fernando? Uh, nope. Yeah, I didn't think so. I was originally going to talk about the Game Boy Advance port of Super Mario World as well, but there is so many more differences in that game that it could have its own episode. Maybe some other time. Can I be in that episode too? Only if we do a versus of that game as well. Well fuck that then. Let's start our adventure off on the title screen. You'll notice that they got a bit carried away with the drop shadow on the Japanese version, but this does make it look a lot like the Mario 3 title screen. Apparently us westerners found that drop shadow just too damn intimidating. Now before we continue, let me just say that the PAL and American versions are pretty much the exact same game, except for the next two differences. This difference I love mentioning all the time. Yeah, because it's the only good thing about the PAL version. Hey shut up! In the bonus stage, the 1UP mushrooms move much slower in the Japanese and American versions of the game. But in the PAL version, they move at a regular speed, which allows me to play a little game I like to call Dodge the Mushroom. Seriously, I wish you could do this in every version. Me too, Josh. Me too. When you get every single exit in the game, a different thing happens to your clear number on the title screen in every version. It stays the same regular yellow number in the Japanese version, whereas a star is added to the number in the American version, and the PEL version turns the number blue. Personally, I prefer the PEL version. What about you, Fernando? I like the American version because the star reminds me of Rosalina and she's my bae. Yeah, you wish. Let's take a look at some of the sprite text. The text on the Resnor wheel is his Japanese name in the Japanese version. The Bowser sign on top of his castle is his Japanese name in the Japanese version, Koopa. The mailbox at Yoshi's house is... Let me guess, it's his Japanese name in the Japanese version. Wrong! It's in Japanese text instead. On to the world map. In the Japanese version, the number the level uses is the same font as your life counter. Speaking of level numbers, the Japanese version had some ones on the level that only had one level to begin with. Cheese Bridge, Cookie Mountain, Forest Secret Area, and Chocolate Secret Area all had the one axed off of them in the international release. Good thing they took those ones off. I'd be confused thinking there was a Chocolate Secret 2 around there somewhere if they left them on. Do you remember how to re-enter a castle after you defeated it? No. Well, all you had to do was press L and R together to go back in. But I wouldn't be talking about this if I didn't have a reason to, right? You're just trying to stop for video time, aren't you? Uh, no. In the Japanese version, this doesn't work. There is no way to replay a castle. But I suppose Mario does destroy the castles, so re-entering them is kinda weird, huh? Does Mario travel back in time before he destroys the castle? Can he run into himself? Uh, I'm looking too far into this. It's finally time to enter some levels. Now, I wouldn't be surprised at all if your reaction was, uh, okay, to most of these differences. <laughs> Donut Plains 2 has an added yellow block in the international release. I guess they thought that level was so hard that you needed a mushroom. In Donut's Secret House, if you run against the right wall in the Japanese version, you can see the wall end. This was fixed in the international release. Now this one just confuses me. In the international release, a cape feather was added to this completely random block. Now I have no idea why they put this here. A cape won't help you reach the secret exit, and it won't help you much in this level. Not only that, unlike the yellow block in Donut Plains 2, this one is hidden. So you probably wouldn't even know it's there. Cool down man, it's just an added cape feather. <sighs> You're right, let's move on. Ah, this difference is fairly well known. In the Japanese version, you can eat the dolphins in Vanilla Secret 3, but this was removed in the international release. I have to agree with the localization team on this one because I sure wouldn't want to eat any of these guys. They're just so cute. Kawaii. Next we move on to number 3 Lemmy's Castle. I guess the localization team had a really tough time with this one because they bumped the timer up to 400 seconds from 300 seconds. I suppose they are kind of fast to be seconds though. Let's call the Mario Timer Seconds trademark. 
Dude, what are you talking about? That level was hard as dicks. Just because you died a bunch of times here in the verses. Now here's a difference that actually makes sense. In Chocolate Island 3, there's some signposts here telling you that you need to go under the level clear to get to the secret exit. Now the secret exit is required to continue the game because the regular exit in this level just spins you around in a loop. In the Japanese version, there was only one signpost, but they added the extra two in the international release to make it more obvious that the secret exit was there. Of course, it's still technically a secret exit, so there isn't a blatant sign telling you that there's a secret exit. If a signpost told you to go jump off a cliff, would you do it? If I had a cape that enabled me to fly forever, then sure. <laughs> in the ghost ship, there's some one-ups in the water right at the end of the international release. These weren't here in the Japanese version, just another completely random thing they decided to add, I guess. I really have no comment at this point. Here's another time of difference. In Funky, nice level names by the way, there are these green fruits Yoshi can eat to extend the Mario Timer Seconds trademark counter. In the Japanese version, there's three green fruits in the whole level, but they added another six in the international release, bringing the total up to nine green fruit. But that's not Funky's only difference. The message at the end reads, You are a super player in the international release. But thanks to the Japanese English, they got, You are super player instead. Now let's take a brief look at the Nintendo Super System. The what? Just roll with it. For those who don't know, which included me before I was doing research on this episode, Nintendo released an arcade cabinet in the US called the Nintendo Super System. This was essentially a preview for SNES games, and the more money you put in, the longer you could play. To accommodate for being an arcade game, you were able to select any world to start from on the title screen, saving and all in-game references to saving were removed, and stuff like pressing start select to exit a level you've already cleared, and swapping lives with player 2 were removed. But apart from that, it's exactly the same game. Why have I never heard of this before? This sounds super fly wizard guy. The Nintendo Super System does sound cool, but it's nothing that isn't already in the original game. But anyway, that's all the differences I've got for now. For the two people watching this who haven't played Super Mario World yet, <laughs> what are you doing? Go play Super Mario World now, you'll thank me later. If you don't want to play it yourself for some crazy reason, you can always watch the verses me and Josh did over on my channel. Or if you want to watch some more version differences, check out my previous video on Zelda 2. This has been Version Differences with Josh Kell. And I'm Fernando from Epsilon. See you next time.